Ready? Ready. Yeah. Okay, so we're continuing with volume two. We're in chapter four. We're going to finish up chapter four and go maybe into chapter five a little bit tonight. Okay. Um, I'm sorry we weren't here last week. I just wasn't feeling well enough to be able to put 100% into what we were doing. Um, the um, place that we left off was page 128. All right, I don't have anything to read in advance because I want to make sure I get through all of the rest of chapter four at a minimum tonight. Okay, so I'm starting right in on the very last page of page, or the last part of page 128 where it says, the Gohonzon is a clear mirror yep. reflecting our own life. <clears throat> Can anybody, and I'm drinking coffee tonight, so thank you. Um, can anybody tell me the significance of that statement? Why is that, why is that bold? What's, why, why is that the, the call out for this paragraph as a subject? The Gohonzon is a clear mirror reflecting one's own life. What's that really mean? What's really that referred to? We have, we, <laughs> yeah, obviously. We know that we have uh, Buddhahood. Yes, but not only that, and, and that that Buddhahood is inseparable from ourselves, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And then how do we manifest and bring forth that Buddhahood? We have to become actually, aware of it, right? okay? Yeah. To become aware of it, we have to see ourselves for how we truly are, right? Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That's what chanting Daimoku to the Gohonzon brings forth in our life in our wisdom, right? Yeah. That wisdom becomes the clear mirror they're talking about, mm. okay? So there is no separability between you and that clear mirror. That clear mirror is the clear, true aspect of your life, okay? With all the delusion removed. Right. And that's what we're chanting. That's what comes forth naturally. That's why, you know, to, to chant Daimoku to the Gohonzon is, is observing the mind. Okay, you don't have to go into a big Tentai, Makashikan, mm. you know, trance or meditation. Mm. This simple process of just chanting Daimoku and thinking, and chanting Daimoku and thinking. But is that, what do you, what, what, when does that come forth? When you're thinking what? Just because you're thinking? You is know. the Gohonzon so powerful you can mm. just turn it on autopilot and blah, 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 no. Blah, 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 blah. No. no. You have to have a seeking spirit. Right? You have to be pursuing something. Usually that's why we have the benefit of misfortune. Mm -hmm. You ever wonder why we have so much misfortune? <laughs> because we have to overcome. Exactly. It all becomes <laughs> benefit and what it actually becomes is the firewood of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Because with those experiences, we're able to experience with our own life and buy into this concept, mm -hmm. this life concept that's been, you know, uh, revealed by the Daishonu with Nam Yoho Rengeko. This is about how to establish actual Ichin and Sansan, right? Which had only been able to be achieved theoretically for 1,500 years, 1,600 years before the Daishonu came along. Mm -hmm. Everybody's with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so... <clears throat> uh, I'll continue on the bottom of page 28 where it says the Gohonzon is a clear mirror reflecting one's own life. Also, I may not be able to speak well because of a little dental thing going on, but <clears throat> I'll do my very best. Here we go. All right. In writing the object of... This is from President Kate. President Kate continues on page 128. In writing the object of devotion for observing the mind, the Daishonin systematically clarifies the way for all people to reveal the object of devotion inherent in their lives. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going back to this issue of what's, what's the real Gohonzon? Obviously, the scroll in the altar is a real Gohonzon. Right. Okay, uh -huh. but what does it manifest on its own? Um, the connection we have zero, zero. Right. It's a piece of paper, right? On its own, without the connection of a life, mm -hmm. okay, right. to bring out because what it is is it's a mechanism mm. to reach the real Gohonza, which is a part of the life of your life. It's living. This Gohonzon I'm talking about, that he's about to talk, is a living Gohonzon. It's not a piece of paper printed with a bunch of stuff on it, Gohonzon. Do you understand? Right. That's the actual Gohonzon that allows all people to achieve the same Buddha wisdom right. mm -hmm. through the practice of chanting Nam Yoho Rengeko to the Gohonzon. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes. 
Okay, now again, obviously there are different uh, objects of devotion. We already know that. People mm. chant Nam Yaho Renge Kyo to foxes. Oh, uh, yeah? You didn't know that? No. Yeah, one sec chants it's to foxes, oh, another one to sta <laughs> statu <laughs> statues of Shakyamuni. Oh. You know, there's a lot of different things. Oh. Okay, the mm. different schools have all taken on different objects of devotion. That's what made Nietzsche and Shoshu significant and separate from the rest of them because it had adopted the Gohonza they that it insisted Nietzsche had left for this purpose. Okay? It, Gohonza was kind of optional in the other schools. It was really like, okay, when, when he didn't have statues he could give you, he would bah. do this thing. And it came in various different forms as he developed it ultimately. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was never one original interpretation. That mm -hmm. interpretation of the Gohonza that the Daishana provided his followers kept growing and evolving in how it was actually presented. If you saw the Dai Gohonza, and you look at our uh, Nitatsu Shonen Gohonza, you'd see they look completely different. Okay? And that's why this isn't about that piece of paper. Okay? What is manifesting is the reality that's inside you that doesn't have a visual identity. It doesn't, you know, you have to worry about the placement of the characters of the Gohonzon inside your life. It is your life. Well, they do. That's, why do you think we study this shit? I'm trying to help you out by reading all the shit that nobody reads to you so you can know the things that people never say that. Mm -hmm. Well, they never say that because they don't know to say that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. When That's the truth. Them, say, oh, I I think you don't know. have to listen to me. Listen to Daisaku Okada. All <laughs> I'm doing is quoting people that do know. <laughs> okay, so this isn't off of the top of my head that I'm saying this. <laughs> my mentors led me to understand this. Then I got a chance to read this and realize it's saying the same thing my mentors taught me. <laughs> okay, so the Gohonzon, going back again, starting over on 128, very bottom. The Gohonzon is a clear mirror reflecting one's own life. Mm. That's mm. its purpose. Mm. Each yeah. one of us, when we get in front of the Gohonzon, that Gohonzon is reflecting our life. So the group of us were just chanting to technically my Gohonzon. Okay? Did mm. I get all that benefit? Was everybody else cut out? No. It's a one-to-one -one thing for the moment that is occurring because what you're really functionally activating is the Gohonzon's mm. inside you, which only goes wherever you go. Mm. Get it? Okay. So the Gohonzon that's actually activated is always there. It's not the one in the altar. Mm. It's the one in you. The one in the altar is being used as a means to bring forth the one that's already always there, that's mm. inside of you. You with me? Yes. Okay. The Daishonin systematically clarifies the way for all people to reveal the object of devotion and inherent, inherent in their lives. So he's saying the whole point of the Daishonin's teachings mm -hmm. is to allow people to systematically bring forth mm -hmm. this object of devotion, which is the true essential object of devotion because it's in all life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not in an altar. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Daishonin indicates by the title the object of devotion for observing the mind that the object of devotion is succinctly internal. Okay? All right. Then, in the first half of this write, writing, so the Gohonzon is internal. When he's talking about the Gohonzon, he's talking mm -hmm. about the Gohonzon that's in the altar. Yes, that's included. But the actual Gohonzon that's being accessed, that's providing all of this continuity and sameness, mm. is the aspect of Nam Yoho Renge Kyo in your life, which is that sameness. Mm. You follow? Yeah. Okay. All right. In the first half of this writing, the Daishonin discusses observing the mind. In conclusion, he reveals the profound doctrine that embracing the Gohonzon is in itself observing one's own mind, okay? So when you went to go uh, bitch about your boss or to pray to get a new job, were you thinking about the actual process of what you were doing? Were you going to have a religious ceremony and observe your mind as you contemplated that? No, no, you just actualized and you, you prayed about the things that concerned you. But in the olden days, you'd have to go through all kinds of 10 steps, 10 steps, 10 steps, 10 steps. Don't forget, 
to do great concentration and insight, you had to go the ten, through 10 steps of this and 10 stages of this and 10 stages of that. It wouldn't be something as simple as sitting down, right? So he's saying he reveals the profound doctrine that embracing the Gohonzon is in itself observing one's own mind. Embracing the Gohonzon is nothing casual. It's the same thing as if you were doing serious, focused, contemplative, mind examining kind of, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, theoretical Lichen and Sunset, where you're contemplating a bunch of facts and, and issues to try and get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. We get to the bottom of it just by going through the issues that are involved in daily life. Do you understand? You're not, when you're, when you're chanting about those other problems, you're not chanting about uh, uh, solving the mystery of your enlightenment or your Buddhahood, right? Mm -hmm. But you are advancing toward that point because mm -hmm. it's that, those in circumstances will allow the growth in your faith that will bring you to the point where you start to focus on attaining Buddhahood as something that's legitimate and serious and real that you want to accomplish before you die. Okay, so in the first half of this writing, the Daishonin discusses observing the mind. In conclusion, he reveals the profound doctrine that embracing the Gohonzon is in itself observing one's own mind. Saito, that's right. In the latter half, the Daishonin discusses his establishment of the object of devotion based on his observation of the mind. All right, President Ikeda. This time, let's focus on the principle that embracing the Gohonzon is in itself observing one's own mind. All right? The last mm -hmm. thing that we really discussed in detail was this concept that the Gohonzon is really the object of devotion that resides within you. Okay? Now we're going to go on to uh, 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 embracing the Gohonzon is in itself observing one's own mind. Just as serious a form of meditation as anything out there is the point. Okay, without it being out of the range, realm, or reach of any individual. Okay? He says, Morinaka, certainly. First, in the same writing, the Daishonin says the observation of the mind means to observe one's own mind and define the ten worlds within it. This is what is called observing the mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, which means what? That God exactly. Himself. Observing your mind and realizing that Buddhahood is, a, is one of the ten worlds that resides in your life. Okay? Mm -hmm. President Ikeda. In other words, observing the mind means to perceive that our lives are originally endowed with all of the ten worlds from hell to Buddhahood. This is the actual practice of observing the mind. Okay? Not, finding, not observing the mind and finding that there is no Buddhahood. <laughs> Finding that there is Buddha. All right? Okay, so, Morinaka. <laughs> All right? Morinaka, observing the mind is Buddhist practice and concrete action. Because, again, this isn't just about mind candy fluff bullshit. This is about actualizing a process that makes you behave differently, makes you perceive differently, makes you take action differently. Mm. This is called human revolution. Yes. Okay? Mm. And this human revolution is happening incrementally mm. as you develop your faith mm -hmm. over time. <laughs> All right? Yes. So he says, <clears throat> uh, in, in other words, President Kata, in other words, observing the mind needs to perceive that our lives are originally endowed with all of the ten worlds from hell to Buddhahood. This is the actual practice of observing the mind. Morinaka, observing the mind is, is Buddhist practice and concrete action. Nevertheless, I wonder what it means in a practical sense to observe that one's life is endowed with all ten worlds. President Ikeda, as set forth in the object of devotion for observing the mind, the true meaning of perceiving the ten worlds with one, within one's own mind lies in manifesting the world of Buddhahood within one's own life. So I had a good friend ask me to try to help explain the difference between animality and anger and why anger was a click higher than animality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my answer is none of that bullshit matters, to be honest with you. Okay? That has nothing to do with the attainment of Buddhahood in your present form. Now, I have no problem answering that from a curiosity standpoint. Mm -hmm. I won't take my time to do it. I'll answer his letter separately. 
but since I know he's going to watch this before he probably gets my reply, that's my reply, brother. All right? While we are endowed with the ten worlds, at any given moment, we are only able to observe the one world that is manifest at that time. At that time means at that moment, too, because this is changing on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. You are, you're with me? Mm -hmm. right? Top of page 130. The question is how we manifest the higher states. The four noble worlds of voice hearers, learning, cause awakened ones, realization, bodhisattvas, and Buddhas, which are not readily forthcoming. Moreover, the world of Buddhahood is the most difficult of all to bring forth. So that's, it's obvious why it should then subsequently require the greatest challenge and effort on our part, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Saito. The object of devotion for observing the mind, in the object of devotion for observing the mind, the Daishonin looks at the six lower worlds that manifest within the life of an ordinary person, as well as the life conditions of the two worlds of voice hearers and cause awakened ones. Everybody's with me, right? Mm -hmm. And the worlds of, of Bodhisattva and the world of Bodhisattva. He then concludes Buddhahood is the most difficult to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. President Ikeda. Though we speak of observing the ten worlds in one's own life as an ordinary person, the key issue is whether we can manifest the world of Buddhahood. Obviously, that's the big challenge. The reason the Daishonin talks about perceiving the ten worlds and not perceiving the world of Buddhahood is that even when the world of Buddhahood manifests, the other nine worlds don't simply disappear. We don't somehow become a 10th world Buddha. We don't become someone that is always in the 10th world and the nine worlds no longer manifest in our lives. We no longer have any hunger for anything. Right? We, we, know, we no longer have the happiness of the heavenly realm. We no longer have the reality of the human realm. We never get angry about anything. Okay? That just isn't real. That's not, human. that's not human. Okay? So that's what he's trying to say. That's why Buddhahood is the most difficult to demonstrate. Because whenever it exists, like all the other ten worlds, it's only there momentarily. But it's there less frequently momentarily than the other. We experience anger all the time. We know anger's there. That's a real being. Right? Okay. So he says, <clears throat> let me go again. President Akita. Though we speak of observing the ten worlds in one's own life as an ordinary person, the key issue is whether we can manifest the world of Buddhahood. The reason that I shown in talks about perceiving the ten worlds and not perceiving the world of Buddhahood is that even when the world of Buddhahood manifests, the other nine worlds don't simply disappear. That's because observing the mind always means observing the true aspect of the mutual possession of the ten worlds. So what did that just say? This is key. If you really want to understand what's being said, okay, what the teaching is, you got to understand what he's trying to reveal to you now. Because you won't get this at your local discussion meeting. Okay, so let me ask that again, because that's because observing the mind always means, what's always means mean? Always. Without <laughs> exception. This is the way it manifests, okay? Always means observing the true aspect mm -hmm. of the mutual possession of the ten worlds. Because to observe a single world is bullshit. Because there's no such thing as a single world. Mm -hmm. It's all firing off like this all over the place. You couldn't grasp a single rule long enough to look at it to be able to perceive it. Maybe sometimes, but I'm saying not Buddha. The reason, what I'm trying to say is that every moment is a, this combination of the mutual possession. So you should never look at hell as something that negates Buddhahood. Hell's there so Buddhahood can't be. No, they can both be there. This is the point. The mutual possession means exactly that. The mutual possession of the ten worlds doesn't mean that, you know, that, uh, that they all mutually reside within us for them to manifest one by one by one. 
in uh, some sort of an ascension. When you see it in a, when it's written, it, it looks like a scale, you know, and the of top course of the scale is a ten. And that's what I'm so trying to destroy the misunderstanding, yeah, and that's why President yeah. Kate is explaining it this way. It's not a scale. It's not a scale. But okay, one <laughs> hell and Buddhahood, ten are exactly in the same place at the same time. Mm. It depends on what you're in hell over. Are you in hell over the suffering that's being caused by all of the devastation and loss of life of COVID that's ravaging the world? Mm -hmm. Are you in hell because of injustice and, and 250, farmers having, 250 million farmers having to march for the sake of, of, of sustaining their rights as human beings? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the point. There is no specificity to hell because it can be modified by enlightenment. It can be modified by any of the other nine worlds in the ten. You can have a hell of hunger. You can have a hell of heavenly beings. You can have, have a hell of learning or realization. Mm -hmm. You can say, you know, all, that something bad happens that brings forth an epiphany. Mm -hmm. That's that same process, okay? Mm -hmm. You're with me now then, right? Yeah. Okay, so... For instance, he says, suppose uh, you were to reach a complete impasse. Has anybody ever done that? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Complete impasse. At this moment, agonizing in the life state of the world of hell by perceiving the true aspect of the mutual possession of the ten worlds and being convinced of the great life force of the world of Buddhahood that undeniably endows your life, you can nevertheless overcome everything and realize victory. What did that just talk about? You have to be at the bottom. Faith, so you faith, faith, faith. Because if you don't believe that, you can't do it. Mm. Okay? You, if, you, if you don't believe that the switch is there, you can't go reach for the switch and go, oh, that's right. I need to chant Daimoku. And suddenly that hell changes and starts to manifest into something that is completely different than hell. Mm. But you got there because of hell. Mm. Okay? So was now hell really a, was hell a lower thing at mm. that point in time? No! It's a seed of enlightenment. Yeah. It's the seed of Buddhahood. Mm. Right? All the nine worlds are actually that. Seeds of Buddha. Yes. They all are the predication. We live in the nine worlds. Mm. But the mind is the, man of, is the tenth world. Okay? So for us to manifest the tenth world, we have to have the other nine worlds involved in some fashion. Because we live in the real world. The real world is the nine worlds. Do you understand? Yeah. Mm. Okay. We are not an ethereal, spooky, altered state spook. Okay? We're not a spirit. <laughs> yeah. We're not a concept. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. We're real. All right? So we have to live in the real world, the nine worlds. So whenever we manifest Buddhahood, it's in conjunction with one of the other nine worlds. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why Bodhisattva is right there. It's almost as high. It's a good place to jump from there to Buddhahood. Okay, you get it? Mm -hmm. All right. So, by perceiving the true aspect of the mutual possession of the ten worlds and being convinced of the great life force of the world of Buddhahood that undeniably endows your life, you can nevertheless overcome everything and realize victory. What did that just say? Listen to the sentence. Mm. By perceiving the true aspect of the mutual possession of the ten worlds, which is this teaching, mm. right? Mm. This teaching is telling mm. you that there's a mutual possession, correct? Mm. Yeah. Is it giving you that mutual possession? No. Mm. What gives you that mutual possession? Faith. Faith. And a relationship with the correct object of devotion. Yeah. Okay? So, he says... By doing that and being, and, and being convinced in the great life force of the world of Buddhahood that undeniably endows your life. So what is that saying? It's, it's saying you're taking on as an issue of faith the absoluteness of this idea that Buddhahood resides there. You're not saying maybe if it's there would you come out so I could possibly see no, you? No, no. no, you're saying I know you're there no matter what you do I'm going to continue until you come out and reveal mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. 
You force that manifestation through the will of your Buddha nature. That's the, that, that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the object of devotion, trying to draw out the inner object of devotion to manifest what's real. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. The scroll isn't going to get you a new job. You're going to get you a new job. But you're going to utilize that to manifest the aspect of your life that's empowered to do that. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm never going to get this through this. <laughs> <laughs> so again, he said, by perceiving the truth. So what he's basically saying, by having faith in the teaching and being convinced that the teaching is correct, is what I'm saying in simple language while I'm rereading these sentences, you can nevertheless bring forth this thing that you can't bring forth otherwise. Okay? Okay. So then Saito says at the bottom of 130, we've got a whole page already. <laughs> I'm sorry. How many did you play? But I love tonight? this shit. I gotta make sure that I say it ten times so I know you yeah. understand what I'm saying. Okay. It says, Saito, <laughs> it is not that hard intellectually mm -hmm. to grasp the principles of three thousand realms in a single mm -hmm. moment of life and the mutual possession of the ten worlds. Mm -hmm how you could be a Buddha in your present form mm -hmm. in this moment mm -hmm. without changing anything about yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But understanding, sensing, and gaining confidence in the depths of our hearts that these principles are true is most difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so what's the solution to the fact that they're most difficult? You have to live in that Lifelong faith. That's right. <laughs> The continuous cycle of repetition voilà. that finally brands into your brain, I'll be goddamned I am the Buddha. Mm -hmm. Exactly as I am. Mm -hmm. I've been reading it forever. I understood that's what it was saying. I didn't disbelieve it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really, 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 really buy in or understand what was being said. Mm -hmm. Truly perceiving the truth. Mm -hmm. That's why... Years and years and years later, I'm still talking about this and still mm -hmm. ascertaining it further mm -hmm. myself and still trying to share it, okay, to expedite the process for you. He says at the top of page 131, um, the, in the object of devotion for observing the mind, the Daishonin repeatedly says that the fact that we living beings of the evil age of the latter day of the law are endowed with the world of Buddhahood is the most difficult to believe and difficult to understand. So when you run into that wall, you were supposed to run into that wall. Everybody runs into that wall. Why is that wall important? It forces the issue that faith must be an integral, absolute aspect of this occurring. Okay? Because faith is the only thing that will get you over that wall. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that will allow you to perceive the truth because until yeah. you manifest it, you can't know it. Mm. Right? It's theoretical. Mm. That's the whole point. Actual Ichin and Sanzen is when you know you are the Buddha. You're not thinking you might be the Buddha or the teaching says you're the Buddha or you're doing this because you know you're supposed to be the Buddha. You are the Buddha, all right? Yeah. Morinaka, he suggests on page 131 that it defies our imagination. It certainly does. That's why it's so hard to perceive as something that's real. He suggests that it defies. Nietzsche says this. It's his teaching of understanding how hard and difficult this is. You think he didn't grapple with the same stuff? Okay, I understand it. Now, how in the hell am I going to explain it to anybody? So he's already gone through all, all of this himself. Mm -hmm. That's why we go through it. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it real. Rather than something we just bought from somebody else, assimilated. We become Buddhas in the truest sense. He suggests, Morinaka, that it defies our imagination and that the life state of the world of Buddhahood should exist in the lives of ordinary people. After all, it is the same life state as Shakyamuni Buddha, whose vast ranging practices over many past existences and the great benefits he gained as a result are set forth in the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings and in the theoretical and essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra. After posing this difficult question from the object of devotion for observing the mind, mm -hmm. the Daishonin answers it by elucidating the doctrine 
that embracing the Gohonzon is in itself in its, is in itself observing one's own mind. You don't have to do any practice beyond that. There's not a PS. There's not a there's not a Makashi Khan waiting for you after great concentration and insight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that is that is the Makashi Khan. Rather than uh, uh, principles of the Lotus Sutra, whatever the for one of the other three is here, as I'm trying to give you a, an example. He says, President Akita then jumps in and says. It is a truth of life that every person is fundamentally endowed with the world of Buddhahood. This truth is hard to understand and hard to believe, but he's saying it's a truth, whether you believe it or understand it. That's what he qualified in that, those first two sentences. He says, even if one may believe it at the present moment, it is easy to lapse into disbelief. Don't we all know that? Mm -hmm. That's why we have to sustain faith daily by embracing the Gohonzon daily. Mm -hmm. This isn't about a belief. Mm -hmm. This is about a practice. This isn't about a knowledge. That knowledge will disappear mm -hmm. in the absence of you sustaining faith. Mm -hmm. You won't believe what you once knew as a fact. <laughs> oh, is that a scary thought? But it's true. I've seen it happen to a lot of people. They don't grow. They shrink. Mm. All right? He says, um, pardon me. So the Aishonin says that we need a clear mirror to carry out the practice of observing the mind. The practice of observing the mind. This daily event which sustains it and keeps mm. it fresh and, mm. and, and keeps it from from, from going away. Mm. In earlier times, the Lotus Sutra of Shakyamuni provided such a clear mirror, as did Tintai's mm. great concentration and insight. Mm. That was the object of devotion for the middle day. Mm. The other one was the statue of Shakyamuni could have sufficed to, as the object of devotion for the former day. In the latter day of the law, the clear mirror is the Gohonzon of Nichiren Daishonin of Nichiren Daishonin, not Shakyamuni or Tintai. All right? Mornaka, bottom of 131. The object of devotion for observing the mind, the Daishonin says, the, in the object of devotion for the observing the mind, the Daishonin says, only the clear mirror of the Lotus Sutra and of the great teacher Tintai's great concentration and insight can one see one's own ten worlds, hundred worlds, thousand factors, and three thousand realms in a single moment of life. Wow, what did that just say? Without Tentai's interpretation, this all falls apart anyhow. Tentai's not just supplemental or, oh, by the way, thanks for helping make it more clear. In the absence of his extrapolation of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, because remember, the Lotus Sutra only has the 10 factors. Right? Okay, that ain't 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. It's nowhere, 3,000 realms in a single moment of life isn't in the Lotus Sutra. It's not in any of Tentai, it's not in any of Shakyamuni's teachings. Mm -hmm. That's from Tentai. Okay? And that's the significance of the fact that this is from one Buddha to another 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 Buddha. To another Buddha. It's living. It's living. Mm -hmm. It's living. It's living, it's constantly changing in accord with the time and the people that are occupying the land. The land. President Ikeda, 132. The Lotus Sutra and great concentration and insight are mirrors for perceiving and manifesting the ten worlds, particularly the world of Buddhahood, that are inherent in one's life. The Lotus Sutra and great concentration and insight are clear mirrors that were created in response to the conditions under which Buddhism was being spread, including the culture, traditions, and the character of the people of India and China. Each was significant in enabling people to perceive the object of devotion in their own lives. That was the function of the object of devotion then, just as it is now. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. So the point is that not to worship and idealize the scroll and the altar. I'm not taking anything away from that object of devotion because it's one with your life. But to realize it's not separate from your life. And that's why it has the merit that it does. Do you follow? Okay, so. The Nietzsche and Daishonin uh, 
inscribes the essence of these teachings in the form of a mandala, which he left behind as a clear mirror for the people of, his, of this period of the latter day. Jose Toda, Okagakai second president, said that the form of the Gohonzon is expressed in the passage of the expedient means, second chapter of Lotus Sutra, that details the true aspect of the ten factors of life. He also <laughs> explains, Nyoze So, Nyoze Sho, Nyoze Tai. We all know that, right? Mm. He also explained that the, that Tantai's practice of concentra concentration, pardon me. He also explained that Tantai's practice of contemplation and meditation to realize 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, which he developed based on the true aspect of the 10 factors, was a method for actualizing the object of devotion in one's own life. He's, so he's saying basically it did the same thing as chanting Daimoku does for us today with the Gohonzon, because there was no Gohonzon with Tentai, right? Okay, so in the latter day of the law, the Dai Shonen directly manifested in the form of the Gohonzon, the mystic law to which he had become enlightened. Therefore, as President Toda clearly explained, chanting Nam Yoho Rengeko to the Gohonzon causes the object of devotion to permeate our entire being. All right? We activate the original state, which is the essence of all things, including us. All right? Embracing the Gohonza at the bottom of page 132 and imbuing one's own life in the, with uh, the world of Buddhahood through strong faith is the practice for attaining Buddhahood in the latter day. When we make the Buddhist spirit for the happiness of all people our own and take action as the Buddha's emissary, the world of Buddhahood, for all, uh, all the more strongly imbues our lives. If we carry out the work of the thus come one as an emissary of the thus come one, the rhythm of the life of the thus come one will reverberate in our being. For precisely this reason, we have to take action energetically for Kosen Rufu. We must also have utmost respect for those who advance the spread of Buddhism, treasuring them as we would a Buddha. Okay, so let me go back again to the bottom of page 132, where he says, In the latter day of the law, the Daishon directly manifested in the form of the Gohonza and the mystic law to which he had become enlightened. There, the mystic law to which he had been, been, which was the essence of his life itself. Okay, understand that's what the Gohonzon actually is, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, therefore, as President Toda clearly explained, chanting Nam Yoho Rengeku to the Gohonzon causes the object of devotion to permeate our entire being. Now, here's the kicker. In, this is what you got to do, though, this part. Embracing the Gohonzon and imbuing one's own life with the world of Buddhahood. So what have you done? You've embraced the object of devotion, and from it, you've imbued your life. You've manifested the Buddhahood that's represented in the Gohonza and from the original state that actually exists in your life, okay? Through strong faith, okay? So this qualifies totally, period, that to pull this off, it takes strong faith. This cannot be done academically out of curiosity. This has to be done with a seeking spirit towards <laughs> achieving the objective of attaining Buddhahood in your present form. Mm -hmm. Follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he says, uh, is the practice for attaining Buddhahood in the latter day? So if you don't do it that way, it won't work this way. Mm -hmm. So don't bitch to me if you say it's not working this way. Then I'll just say, you're not doing it this way. Because <laughs> that's the only way it doesn't work this way. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's a real clear answer when people say, I'm not getting benefit. Then you're not chanting right. Something's wrong in your head. Something you're thinking or something you're doing is negating what you're trying to accomplish. You're going through challenges that you're maybe not being patient enough with. You're not expressing the faith that he's already qualified. Strong faith isn't like I chanted about this today and it didn't happen. <laughs> okay? Strong faith means I don't care how long I have to chant. I'm yeah. convinced I know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about how long it's going to happen. That's not the point. The point is for me to show actual proof through my life by not giving in, not giving up, and being a living example of the type of person that it takes to become this Buddha in your present form. So it says, it says when we make the Buddha spirit for the happiness of all people our own, and so then why do you have that kind of a prayer? 
the one that I just explained that I'm, I'm saying I'm not going to worry that the important thing is that I manifest this for the sake of showing actual proof. What is that now taking on that, that aspect? You've become the Buddha. That's not a common mortal to worry about a nine world thing. It's not about your job or whatever. Now you're worried about representing. Okay, I got to represent. I'm a Bodhisattva of the earth. I got to validate that those guys are real. I'm one of them. You can be too. You are one, but you haven't revealed it yet. Mm -hmm. All of my actions are at the same level as Daisaku Akeda, no matter what a simple life I have. I don't have to be shit. I don't have to be a leader of anything. If this is the conviction of my life, if this is the mind that is, is prevalent in my life, I am the Buddha, period. Mm -hmm. I'm one with Nietzsche. I got the same mind as Nietzsche. That's exactly how he perceives it. That's how President Akeda is encouraging you to perceive it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Serious is a heart attack. Not a casual thing. Mm -hmm. For the sake of all mankind. Now, that's heady shit when we think about ourselves. What the hell have I got to do with all mankind? But if I pull off what I'm trying to pull off, I will affect all mankind. Yes. There's no Buddha that doesn't. Mm -hmm. One Buddha touches another Buddha, and that touches another Buddha. The activation mm -hmm. is, is an unstoppable. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay, so when we make the Buddha spirit for the happiness of all people our own, when we make the desire for Kosen Rufu to be achieved in actuality, not theoretically, uh, our lives take on the action of the, as the Buddha's emissary. We become one with the Gohonza. We become the same thing. Okay? The world of Buddhahood all the more strongly imbued in our lives. If we carry out the work of the thus come one, which is what I'm talking about, that's when, when you're thinking that way, that's what you're doing. Right? You're living as a bodhisattva of the earth. You're not living as a troubled common mortal looking for relief by getting solutions to problems. Mm -hmm. All right? you ha you've already gotten through that. You're now utilizing those solutions and problems and experiences to validate a teaching that can help other people if they have those kinds of things going on. They need help with them. Yes. If we carry out the work of the thus come one as an emissary of the thus come one, the rhythm of the life of the thus come will reverberate in our being. We will be the thus come one. For precisely this reason, we have to take action energetically for Kosen Rufu. We can't be casual about this. We can't be lazy about this. And we can't assume we have forever to do it. Okay? <laughs> you can die any time. Okay? This doesn't mean I'm going to live to be 110 because I want to do it at a 110-year-old pace. Mm -hmm. Right? For precisely this reason, we have to take action energetically for Kosen Rufu, just as you do. Mm -hmm. We must also have utmost respect for those who advance the spread of Buddhism treasuring them as we would a Buddha. So what did that just say? I had to go through all that to get to that last little bit. And then I can go on to Saito. We must also have the utmost respect for those who advance the spread of Buddhism, treasuring them as we would a Buddha. It means we don't do on shitsu. We don't slander fellow practitioners. We don't casually criticize others mm -hmm. without reflecting on ourselves first. Mm -hmm. Okay? We don't cop attitudes <laughs> talking about people. We don't create disunity. That's what that's talking about. Treasuring them as we would a Buddha means that we revere everybody that we see making this similar effort for the similar reason that we are. We don't judge whether we're better or worse than them. We rejoice in the fact that we're all on the same train. Yes. You get it? Yes. All right, so Saito, the world of Buddhahood shown brilliantly within the Daishonin's life. The same world of Buddhahood clearly exists in our own lives. Mm -hmm. To enable people to believe this, the Daishonin inscribes, inscribes his own life, the life of an ordinary person in which the world of Buddhahood is manifested, just like you, mm -hmm. in the form of the Gohonzon, Morinaka. He urges us, observe the ten worlds with your, within your own mind. Manifest the world of Buddhahood in your own life. Realize that the Gohonzon exists within you. Okay? Which is what I've been, this whole thing's been saying over and over again. Yeah. But that's the exclamation on it. All right? President Ikeda, again, you see all these big stars. I got a three star. He goes, 
present Nikita, in the real aspect of the Gohonzon, the Daishonin says, never seek this Gohonzon outside yourself, because it really doesn't exist anywhere outside you. All right? The thing that's really pulling the strings is inside you, not outside you. The Gohonzon exists only within, continuing with the Gosho from the real aspect of the Gohonzon. The Gohonzon exists only within the mortal flesh of us ordinary people who embrace the Lotus Sutra and the Lotus Sutra and chant Nam Yoho Renge Kyo. We must never seek, President Ikeda continues, we must never seek the Gohonzon anywhere but within ourselves, he says. That I shown and attained the life of the Buddha of beginningless time. His teaching would have no meaning unless we could realize the mystic law in our own lives and attain this supremely noble state ourselves. So what did he just say there? <coughs> it would have no meaning unless we can achieve the same state as the Daishonin. The Daishonin isn't up here and we're down here. We're talking about the grand equality, the teacher and the law, same, same level, mentor and disciple, same thing, okay? All right, to explain, at 133, I'm doing good. To explain the Gohonzon's fun function as a clear mirror in simple terms, we can use the example of a woman facing a mirror while putting on her makeup. Looking at the image reflected in the mirror, she applies powder or rouge to her face, thereby seeking to bring out her own beauty. If she were to try to apply powder and rouge to the image reflected in the mirror, <clears throat> however, then no matter how much time she spent doing so, her appearance would uh, remain the same. President Ikeda, it's the same when we face the clear mirror of the Gohonzon. If we only feel that the Gohonzon in the altar is, the, is great, if we only feel that the Gohonzon in the altar is great, and we simply beg for its favor or become dependent upon it as an external object, like most people would pray to God or Jesus, and we do that, people, especially Judeo-Christian people that came over and started practicing after they, their brain had been warped to think that way. It's very hard. But again, this is never outside of you. This is the most important truth that's, been, that's trying to be revealed by the teaching itself. It's the same when we face the clear mirror of the Gohonzon. If we only feel that the Gohonzon in the altar is great, and we simply beg for its favor or become dependent upon it as an external object, then no matter how much time we spend chanting before it, we ourselves will not shine. The same holds true if, when something bad happens, we complain as if it were the Gohonzon's fault. Rather, by tirelessly polishing our own lives in the midst of our daily affairs, in the nine worlds, <coughs> confident that we, are, that we have in ourselves the same wonderful state of life as, that the, as the Gohonzon embodies, living with faith, all right, our lives come to shine with good fortune and benefit. That's how you do it. Tirelessly polishing our lives in the midst of living in the nine worlds, always having faith in the tenth world that resides within us. Our lives come to shine with good fortune and benefit. All right? Mornaka, in lecturing on the passage you just cited, President Tota said, while we may not think, pardon me, while we may think that we are praying to the Daigo Honzen outside us, when we chant Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, believing in the Gohonzon of the three great secret laws, so when we chant to the Gohonzon with faith, the Daigo Honzen, in fact, dwells within our own life. This is the most wondrous teaching. In, something, in someone who does not practice this faith, the Buddha nature, while appearing vaguely to be present, does not function in the least. Mm -hmm. Such a person is at the stage of being a Buddha in theory. Because we embrace the Gohonzon, we are at the stage of hearing the name and the words of the truth. At this stage, the Gohonzon already shines brilliantly within us. It's already manifest. It can never go away once we get to that stage of hearing the name and the words of the truth. All right? It is, only, uh, it is only that the degree to which it shines differs depending upon the strength of our faith. This all boils down to faith. How much benefit you get has to do with how strong your faith is when you chant to the Gohonzon. That's the difference between people that seem to have no problem to get benefit 
and people that do. Is it because the people that have no problem getting benefit are luckier? No. They've created a relationship with the Gohonzon mm. that's reflected in that causal circumstance. Mm. Okay? The people that don't are people that are still in the back of their mind wondering, will the Gohonzon really work? Mm. While they're chanting Nam Yo Rengeko to the Gohonzon, an act of faith, they still can't get rid of the doubt. That's why we call it Mugi Washi. Doubt-free faith, that's what we're trying to achieve in front of the Gohonza, okay? Well, we don't take away what we're putting in. We get the full 10 out of 10 of what we're putting in. This is the same as with a light bulb. A, light, a high wattage light bulb shines brightly and a low wattage light bulb shines faintly. To continue with the analogy of a light bulb, for someone who does not practice this faith, it is like a light bulb that hasn't been plugged in. Because we practice faith, the light bulb that is the Daigo Hanza is switched on. When he's saying Daigo Hanza, he's talking about the very life of the Daishonin. Therefore, our lives shine br brightly. President Ikeda, in the Daishonin's Buddhism, observing the mind is another name for faith. Observing the mind is another name for faith. The object of devotion for observing the mind is the object of devotion of faith. Through strong faith, we connect our lives with the Gohonza. Then the Gohonza within us is activated, and immediately we are embraced in the light of hope. Strength wells forth. Our Daimoku in front of the Gohonza fundamentally changes. Saito. So ultimately then the Daishonin's object of devotion for observing the, uh, the mind is the object of devotion for manifesting the world of Buddhahood within our own lives. Duh. Yes. Do you understand? Let's say it again. So ultimately then, after having read all that, more Mr. Saito's head of the study department is going to summarize. So ultimately then, the Daishonin's object of devotion for observing the mind is the object of devotion for manifesting the world of Buddhahood in our own lives. President Ikeda, it is the object of devotion that enables all people to manifest the world of Buddhahood and perceive the ten worlds in their own lives. Now that object of devotion that allows for that is the object of devotion within your life, not necessarily the scroll in the altar. But try to express or reveal or find that Gohonzon that exists within your own life in the absence of the, the one in the altar. Just chanting nam myoho rengeko without a Gohonzon, this practice of Daimoku that Andre revealed, I guess some people think that just chant nam myoho rengeko and that's it. You don't even really need a Gohonza. Okay? No, that's going around now, evidently. Oh. I'm gathering. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay? Um, I'm seeing people, stuff on the internet that, I mean, again, luckily I already know enough not to pay any attention to it, but it scares me a little bit because it doesn't put a disclaimer out at the beginning saying, I don't know shit. Mm -hmm. Don't believe what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately. So you can read it and think you were reading the real thing, you know? <clears throat> Pardon me. Just, just me talk. Okay, so President Kata, it is the object of devotion that enables all people to manifest the world of Buddhahood and perceive the ten worlds in their own lives. The Daishonin revealed the Gohonzon to make it possible for all people to achieve observation of the mind. The Gohonzon manifests in its entirety the great state of life of the Buddha, who is our eternal mentor. Who is our eternal mentor? Okay, when Daisaku Akeda says our, he's including himself in that, right? Right. Okay, so he's not saying that he's our eternal mentor, is he? Mm -hmm. Okay, no. so... He's not ever talking about that. When he's talking about the eternal mentor or the mentor, it's always the Daishonin. Mm -hmm. When you decide, I like what you're saying, Daisaku Akeda, I'm going to read all your shit and know all about everything you think. That's when he became your mentor. mentor. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. But we're talking about the fundamental truth of the interaction between the Bodhisattva of the earth and the original teacher. That's what he's talking about he's, when he's talking about the mentor here. 
He's saying, it is the object of devotion that enables all people to manifest the world of Buddhahood and perceive the ten worlds in their own lives. The Daishonin revealed the Gohonzon to make it possible for all people to achieve observation of the mind. The Gohonzon manifests in its, entire, in, its, in its entirety the great state of life of the Buddha, who is our original mentor. When we worship the Gohonzon, which is the embodiment of the life of Nichiren Daishonin, a real per, a comma, a real person, comma, the life of a real person, Nichiren Daishonin, is, is embodied in that Gohonzon, and cultivate strong conviction that this Gohonzon, this same thing that we're looking outside in the altar, also exists in our lives, we can dispel fundamental ignorance and manifest within us the life of the world of Buddhahood. So what did he say was important there? That we come to the realization that the Gohonzon that we're looking at in the altar is also manifest in our life. We don't think that the Gohonzon in the altar is the only Gohonzon. Or that the Gohonzon in the altar, the Gohonzon that is clearly outside of us, is the thing that's manifesting in the power that we see when we chant with faith to that Gohonzon. We're activating the real source of all that power. Do you understand? Okay, so, so everybody's... Uh, when we worship the Gohonzon, which is the embodiment of the life of, Nam, of Nichiren Daishonin, Nam Yohan and Geku, the same thing, a real person, the strong, the, and cultivate strong conviction that this Gohonzon, and cultivate strong conviction, or cultivate strong faith that this Gohonzon also exists in our own lives, we can dispel fundamental ignorance and manifest within us the life of the world of Buddhahood. We attain Buddhahood in our present form. Um, I'll continue just a little longer. <laughs> uh, 136. Embracing the Gohonzon is in, in itself observing one's own mind. Mm -hmm. Top of 136. More Naka. The, that observing the mind means faith that observing the mind means faith accords with the concept that embracing the Gohonzon is in itself observing one's own mind. I would like to read a passage from the object of devotion for observing the mind in which the Daishonin explains this principle. Shakyamuni's practices and the virtues he consequently attained are all contained within the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo. If we believe in these five characters, characters, we will naturally be granted the same benefits as he was. Everybody's with me on that, mm -hmm. right? No separation. President Ikeda, in the Lotus Sutra, Shakyamuni expounded various profound doctrines such as the replacement of the three vehicles with the one vehicle and the opening the near and revealing the distance to serve as a clear mirror for observing the mind. In this way, he urged people to develop faith. The great teacher Tintai expounded the doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life as a clear mirror for the practice of observing the mind. By contrast, the Daishonin, by contrast, unlike the way uh, uh, Shakyamuni and Tintai did it, Nichiren did it this way. By contrast, the Daishonin establishes the Gohonzon as the clear mirror. In the above passage, he indicates why it is possible to achieve observ observation of the mind with this Gohonzon as our clear mirror. Saito, practices in the aforementioned passage means the actions caused, pardon me, pa practices in the aforementioned passage means the actions that formed the cause for Shakyamuni to attain Buddhahood. Virtues means the effect or fruit of Buddhahood and, good, and the good fortune and benefit that he attained as a result of these practices. The pre-Lotus Sutra teachings explain that Shakyamuni carried out practices over an extremely long period in countless uh, past existences. This is referred to as countless kalpas of practice. Shakyamuni's practices include, for example, his making an offering of his life during his incarnations as King Shibi, when he gave his own flesh to a hungry hawk to save, in order to save a, do a dove, and his prince Asafa, when he sacrificed himself to save a starving tigress. The virtues he consequently attained are explained in these teachings as attributes of Shakyamuni who attained enlightenment for the first time in India under the Bodhi tree a different Buddha than the one that appears in the 16th chapter. 
The practices and virtues described in the theoretical teaching or the first half of the Lotus Sutra are essentially the same as those described at, in the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings. Everybody understands that, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they're called Chakyaman. They're not Homeman. That's why there's a separation between the first 16 and the last 16. President Ikeda, the essential teaching, page 137, middle, President Ikeda, the essential teaching or second half of the Lotus Sutra explains that Shakyamuni carried out practices and attained virtues in the extremely remote past in the past, in the past known as numberless major world system dust particle kalpas ago, right? You ground all those worlds up again. It describes Shakyamuni as a Buddha of a long lifespan who during the incalculably vast period since attaining Buddhahood has ceaselessly acted to lead people to enlightenment uh, uh, acted to lead people to enlightenment, appearing in various forms. In both the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings and the theoretical teaching, or the first half of the Lotus Sutra, on the other hand, and in the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra, on the other hand, the practices and virtues of the, that, uh, that the Buddha attained are described as truly immense. The Daishonin says that all of these are contained in the five characters of Myoho Renge, are contained in the five characters of Myoho Rengekyo. Morinaka, as the documentary proof to back up his assertion, as documentary proof to back up his assertion, that Daishon incites the passage in the Immeasurable Meaning Sutra that states that one will enjoy the benefits of practicing all of the six paramitas without having to carry out the practices of the six paramitas. He also cites the passage in the Lotus Sutra that explains the principle of perfect endowment and the various passages indicating that the clear that the character Myo, mystic, is all-encompassing. President Ikeda, the Daishon incites these passages as documentary proof. However, the insight that all these vast practices and virtues are contained in just these five characters of Myoho Rengekyo is clearly a matter of the Daishon's profound enlightenment. In the letter to Gijobo, which he uh, compassed, which he composed with uh, one month after writing the object of devotion for observing the mind. The Daishonin, the Daishonin, uh, the Daishonin describes the principle that uh, embracing the Gohonzon is in itself observing one's own mind. In terms of his own practice, I think we should consider this passage as a guide for our future understanding. In that writing, the Daishonin says that uh, he awakened to his own world of Buddhahood through the passage in the verse section of the lifespan chapter that reads, single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha, hesi not hesitating even if it costs him their lives. Morinaka. The passage of the letter from Gijobo states as follows. The verse section of the lifespan chapter states, single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha, not hesitating even if it costs him their lives. As a result of this passage, I have revealed the Buddhahood in my own life. The reason is that it is this sutra passage that has embodied me to, uh, that has enabled me to embody the three great secret laws, or the reality of the three thousand realms in a single moment of life that is found in the lifespan chapter. But keep this, in, but keep this secret. Keep this secret. I Nichiren say that single stands for myo or mystic mind for ho or la desiring for Rin or Lotus, Si for Gay or Flower, and Buddha for Kyo or Sutra. In propagating these five characters of Myoho Rengekyo, practitioners should not hesitate, even if it costs them their lives. Single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha may be, re be read as follows. Single-mindedly observing the Buddha, concentrating one's mind on seeing the Buddha, and when looking at one's own mind, perceiving that it is the Buddha. Having attained the fruit of Buddhahood, because that's what you would have at that point, the eternally inherent three bodies, I may surpass even, he's saying now, having attained the fruit of Buddhahood, the eternally inherent three bodies, I may surpass even Tentai and Dingyo and excel even Nagarjuna and uh, Mahakashayapa. The Buddha wrote that one should become the master of one's own mind rather than let one's mind master oneself. This is what I mean when I emphatically in, uh, urge you to give up even your body and never begrudge even your life for the sake of the Lotus Sutra. Nam yoho rengekyo, nam yoho rengekyo. Got to read this President Keita finale here.
139. In short, single-mindedly, this is President Kedah, in short, single-mindedly desiring to see the Buddha, not, even hesi not hesitating even if it costs them their lives, which is to say faith that is selflessly pursued for which one is even willing to give up one's life, if need be, is the Daishonin's observation of the mind. He also, he says, single stands for myo or mystic, mind for ho or law, desiring for rin or lotus, si for ge or flower, and buddha for kyo or sutra. In other words, what he single-mindedly sought is myoho renge kyo. Moreover, he says that he did not simply seek these five characters himself, but sought to propagate them without begrudging his life, as we must all do the same. Mm. This is practice for oneself and others, Jigyo Keita. The Daishonin calls, for the, calls the fruit of Buddhahood that he attained the eternally inherent three bodies, the eternally inherent three bodies. In other words, as an ordinary person, he awakened to his self as an embodiment of the mystic law, the eternally inherent Dharma body, perceived this law, experienced boundless joy from the law, and attained the body of wisdom, the eternally inherent reward body for expounding and spreading the law to others. He also felt compassion for living beings as possessing the same Dharma body and the potential to awaken to the same wisdom. He took pity on them for their suffering on account of the remaining of remaining ignorant to this fact, and he attained the body of immense compassion, the eternally inherent manifested body, for sharing their sufferings, for sharing their sufferings, because why does a Buddha reappear? Because of his bad karma? No, to save others, to help others, gladly embracing their sufferings, which are not his to suffer. He takes them on in order to lead them. Okay, to not be something different and special and perfect that they have to try to emulate, which they never could. To be just like them for the time that he's with them to teach them because he has an eternal relationship with them. Every single one that he teaches are not anything but close, personal, best friends. He says, the Daishonin even says that because of attaining this fruit of Buddhahood, that realization that I just spoke to, he was able to complete his establishment of the three great secret laws for the enlightenment of all people of the latter day, overcoming great difficulties in order to do so. In truth, it was by single-mindedly embracing Myoho Rengekyo without begrudging his life that the Daishonin could attain the supreme fruit of Buddhahood of the eternally inherent three bodies, just like for us. We got to do the same thing thus becoming the Lord of teachings, just like we do when we become Buddhists. We become Lords of teachings as well. Or the true teacher of the latter day, which we are as well as Bodhisattvas of the earth. That is to say, I, I added those clarifications, but that was all correct. That is to say, he achieved observation of the mind. That's what it is, to look at your mind and to find the Buddha there. When you're constantly perceiving yourself as the thus come one, that's as far as you need to go. There's nothing further to go to. Mm -hmm. All right? Now teach it to everybody else. The Daishona describes the process of achieving observation of the mind by means of single mindedly embracing Myoho Rengekyo, as single mindedly observing the Buddha, concentrating one's mind on seeing the Buddha, and when looking at one's own mind, perceiving that it is the Buddha. Exactly what we do when we chant I'm Oku to the Gohonza. In this passage, he interprets the phrase single-mindedly single desiring to see the Buddha in three ways. The first two meanings, single-mindedly observing the Buddha and concentrating one's mind on seeing the Buddha, correspond to practice. The third meaning, perceiving one's own mind is the Buddha, corresponds to the consequent virtue or effect of that practice, which is Buddhahood. These interpretations are the same in that they all refer to one's mind. In other words, the Daishonin consistently possessed the spirit and, singly, and seeking mind not to begrudge his life, as we all must. Accordingly, while remaining an ordinary person, as we will, his spirit to single-mindedly seek the Buddha resulted in a great spiritual transformation in his attaining the mind of the Buddha, and we will too. 
That's how we're going to do Kos and Rufu together as his disciples. Further, citing the sutra passage, one should become the master of one's mind rather than let one's mind master oneself. The Daishonin emphasizes the importance of the mind. In other words, when we single-mindedly, uh, pardon me, when we single-mindedly maintain ungrudging faith, what's ungrudging faith? A little further than that. We'll do anything. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no, there's no, okay, uh, if, it, if it works up to here, you know, if mm -hmm. it does, I'm going to, no. Mm -hmm. Ungrudging faith. Single-mindedly maintain ungrudging faith. So no matter what's happening, mm -hmm. it's not based on the circumstance of what's happening now. Mm -hmm. It's maintained on the basis of what we know in our mind to be the truth. Mm -hmm. That's an unchangeable truth. That we would die over this truth. Mm -hmm. It's inseparable from us. It is our true identity. Nam mm -hmm. Renge We're Nam Yoho Renge Kyo. That's come ones, right? Mm -hmm. He says, so again, further citing the, uh, the sutra passage, one should become the master of one's mind rather than let one's mind master oneself. The Daishonin emphasizes the importance of the mind. In other words, when we single-mindedly maintain ungrudging faith, which means we don't complain about what we have to do, our lives accord with the mystic law, and the fruit of Buddhahood, which are our benefits, the externally inherent three bodies, naturally emerge within us. Mornaka, I feel that I have now gained a greater and deeper understanding of the doctrine embracing the Gohonzon is itself observing one's own mind. The core of embracing the Gohonzon is the spirit of faith not to begrudge one's life. I am convinced that such faith naturally leads to achieving observation of the mind. Saito. So we could say that the Daishonin inscribes Nam Yoho Rengeko Nichiren down the center of the Gohonzon as an expression of his having completely achieved observation of the mind and the entirety of his practices and consequent virtues achieved through thoroughly embracing and upholding the five characters of Myoho Rengeko. President Ikeda. The Daishonin says that the Gohonzon embodies the life of Nichiren. I would also like to interpret the words down the center of the Gohonzon as expressing the Daishonin's selfless struggle. President Toda revered the Gohonzon as if Nichiren Daishonin were right before him, which is what President Toda taught me, which is what I do. That's how I chant to the Gohonzon. I perceive the Gohon. You see a scroll? I'm talking to my original teacher. He says, President Toda revered the Gohonzon as if Nietzsche and Daishonin were right before him. When we in turn embrace and uphold this Gohonzon, and it, is, and, and it is only natural that in doing so, we practice faith with the, same, with the spirit of not begrudging our lives. And I'll continue on page 141, the, re re the requirements for embracing the Gohonzon. Next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.